in 2019 laid off journalists from media outlets such as BuzzFeed, and their supporters were told to learn to code to find new job opportunities. In December 2019, presidential candidate Joe Biden advised a crowd in a coal mining town to learn computer programming. And according to knowyourmeme.com, the learn to code meme has been around since 2014. In this video, we're going to answer the question, should you learn to code in 2020 and ultimately become a software developer or a software engineer? We will cover salaries, the job market, and unlike other videos, we will give you the real numbers. Coming up. Hey guys and girls, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where we help you with your career search. If you end up liking the video, hit that thumbs up to support the channel. And I also offer consulting services, more information in the description below. So what is a software developer? Software developers are the creative minds behind computer programs. Many people use software developer and software engineer interchangeably. We'll do the same in this video because the government doesn't differentiate between software developer and software engineer. In 2020, most software developers specialize in one area, and there are many different areas. Front-end developers or client-side developers focus on the user interface of web applications. They specialize in CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. Meanwhile, back-end developers specialize on the logic behind the front-end. They control databases and the logic that often isn't viewable by the user. They work in programming languages such as Java, C, C++, and Python. Full-stack developers are a little bit more generalist, and they can do both front-end and back-end work. Mobile developers write code for applications to run natively on mobile devices. They can code in Java, Swift, and Objective-C. And this really just scratches the surface. Other software developers or engineers include game developers, DevOps, WordPress developers, mainframe programmers, and even more. This is a giant market. And in the next chart, I'm gonna show you the scale of how large the market is for software developers. This first chart is comparing the number of employed engineers in different niches and the number of software developers in 2019. The Bureau of Labor Statistics breaks engineering into 16 different niches. Software development and software engineering is not one of these 16, and they do this for surveying purposes. In 2019, they recorded 1.75 million employed software developers. Even the biggest engineering niche, which is industrial engineering, employed 317,000 engineers in 2019. Civil engineering clocked in at around 310,000 jobs. Mechanical engineering clocked in at around 307,000 jobs. And these are the three biggest engineering fields by the number of employed engineers. That's right, all of these engineering niches employ a fraction compared to the number of jobs for software developers. Let's take this even further. Let's combine all 16 engineering fields and compare them with just software developers. If you were to combine all 16 engineering niches, this would amount to 1.6 million employed engineers in 2019. So even if you combine all of these engineering niches, it still doesn't surpass the number of employed software developers in 2019. There are more software developers than all other engineers combined, and it doesn't stop there. And I think this explains so much. So many civil, mechanical, or other engineers end up in software development before this reason. There are just so many software engineering jobs. It is often easier for engineers to get a job as a developer, a software developer, than it is to get an engineering job in their field. So how long has this crazy growth been occurring? This crazy growth in software development has been going on for a while. In 2012, the government recorded 1.4 million employed software developers. In 2019, the number of employed increased to 1.75 million. This means from 2012 to 2019, the number of developers increased by 356,000 jobs. And from a yearly growth perspective, this means on average there are 51,000 new employed software developers every year. Let's put this in perspective really quickly. 50,000 more software developers every year. There are only 33,000 employed petroleum engineers in the United States. There are only 20,000 employed biomedical engineers in the United States. So every year, there are more software engineers, software developers being added to the economy than there are employed in many engineering niches. Ultimately, the scale of this occupation means you can live in almost any city that you want. Jobs are everywhere. In fact, if you search for software developers in the United States, making a broad search on Indeed.com, 
there are almost 67,000 job listings. Where are all these job listings located? In July of 2020, during the filming of this video, the greatest number of job listings are in Seattle. Then you have New York City, you have San Francisco, you have Austin, you have Chicago, and then you have Washington, D.C. So obviously most of the jobs are going to be in the big cities. And keep in mind, 67,000 jobs, this is during the corona epidemic. In other occupations where jobs are hard to come by and people are being laid off, software development opportunities are still relatively plentiful compared to other occupations. This form of job security is huge. Many software developers can easily hop from one job to another without much recourse. Another big reason to become a software developer in 2020 is the pay. In 2012, the Bureau of Labor Statistics recorded the average base salary as $90,470. By 2019, they recorded the average base salary at $106,980. This is about a $17,000 increase from 2012 to 2019. So year over year, the average yearly wage growth has been about 2,400 per year. So if there are any software developers listening or watching this, if you are getting at least a $2,400 raise every single year, you are falling behind. Compared to the other engineering niches, software developers are actually not number one by average national pay. They are beat out by aerospace engineers, chemical engineers, computer engineers, electronics engineers, nuclear and petroleum engineers. Number one by base salary is petroleum engineers who on average have the highest base salary at 157,000 per year. And a note, these are base salaries. They don't include bonuses. They don't include equity, commissions, overtime, or benefits. And these benefits can be huge, especially at certain tech companies like Google and Facebook. So let's just talk about the big tech salaries and benefits for a second. One of the best tools I found to compare big tech, total compensation, salary over time, equity, everything, is at the website levels.fyi. The cool thing about this tool is it shows you compensation at different levels. I am not sponsored by them or anything. I just kind of discovered them through a news article. So I'm definitely not making any money off this endorsement. Here's a couple samples. So first, let's take a look at an L3 at Google. This is kind of an entry level software developer at Google. The average salary is around 125,000 per year, stock about 40,000 and bonus about 20,000, bringing the total compensation at around 187,000 per year. I'm not even sure this includes healthcare and some other benefits. So this total compensation might be even higher. To show you how ridiculous some of these salaries can get, let's look at an L8 from Google. And this is extremely hard to get. You have to be a really talented software developer and you have to pretty much beat out other software developers. An L8 at Google has a total compensation average around 1.4 million per year, only 318,000 in salary. See, most of the compensation is in stock. That person is getting almost over 900,000 per year in Google stock. And the bonus is also pretty high at 122. So the salary might be low, but you get all these other benefits if you're working for a big tech company. But keep in mind, there's 1.75 million software developers out there. Most of them don't work at big tech companies, and most developers won't see this crazy level of compensation. Another thing to keep in mind regarding developer pay is that it is regional. Certain areas of the country tend to pay developers a lot more than others, and those certain areas of the country have definitely have a higher cost of living than other parts of the United States. If we were to rank the top places that tend to pay de software developers the most amount of money, San Jose, California and San Francisco, California would be top of the list. And according to the government, the average base salary in either of those places is 145,000 per year as a base salary. Seattle, the Emerald City is next and they on average pay software developers 134,000 as a base salary. Then there's New York, the Big Apple, 122,000. And next would be Los Angeles, the City of Angels, which is a little less than New York City with an average base salary at around 121,000 per year. All of these metros pay far above the average national salary of 107,000 per year. So let's say you are sold on becoming a software developer. You love the pay and being inside a crazy job market where at the drop of the hat, you can find a new job. So what are the best ways of becoming a software developer? Do you even need to go to college? What about that trendy boot camp down the street? Full disclosure, I actually graduated from Coding Dojo, a coding boot camp in 2016. I attended Coding Dojo in the Washington DC area and successfully transitioned from being a geographer to a software developer. 
I had even gotten a master's degree in my previous field before ultimately deciding to become a full-time software developer. The reason I decided to become a software developer, basically all the reasons I just outlined earlier in the video. Crazy job market and really good pay. But I do want to dispel some myths, especially the myth that you don't need at least a bachelor's degree to start a career as a software developer. In 2017, the Bureau of Labor Statistics did a survey of the education of software developers. Here are their findings. 2% had a high school diploma or equivalent. 8% had some college. 5% had an associate's degree. 50% had a bachelor's degree. 31% had a master's degree. And 4% had a PhD. This means that a minority of software developers don't have a college degree. This shows that it is risky to avoid the college degree and just go straight to the boot camp out of high school. I witnessed this myself at the coding boot camp. The people that previously had college degrees had a much easier time landing a job with an employer than the people that were skipping college and going straight to the coding boot camp to land a job as a software developer. After the boot camp was over, the people that didn't have a college degree would spend months trying to land a job at an employer. And often they weren't successful. Imagine spending 15000 for a five-month coding boot camp, graduating from it, and then not being able to secure a job at an employer and begin your journey as a software developer. It's extremely frustrating, and it is extremely unfair. Just like every occupation, software development has its pros and cons. It honestly isn't for everyone. People that are extremely extroverted might find it really isolating just working by yourself, solving coding problems by yourself and not in a team environment. This occupation is definitely not for everyone. Definitely do your own research before jumping in. Are you interested in becoming a software developer? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video and I will see you next time.